how would we actually make our deck sorted? So to illustrate this, we might look at um, a few cards and look at different ways of sorting our cards. So here we have a mixed set of cards. Let's look at these, a subset of our main card deck. We've got six cards here and they're out of order. Earlier in the video, we demonstrated how a binary search was more efficient than a linear search, which searches from left to right, or the first element in the array, to the last element in the array. However, a binary search only works in a sorted data set. So how on earth do we sort our cards? Well, one way of doing this would be to um, sort our cards using an insertion sort. And I'll demonstrate that now um, by sorting the card alphabetically. The way this works is um, similar to how you would normally sort a hand of cards. You would have um, the left side of your list or array is going to be sorted and the right side is going to be unsorted. So at the moment, let's just start with our first card, the Nintendo Wii, and we add in our Samsung S10. Well, luckily, that is sorted. So now we've got a sorted side of the array, which consists of the Nintendo and the Samsung. Enter ZX Spectrum. Notice all of these are still unsorted. ZX Spectrum will fit in here, and there's no need to do any insertion at the moment. But then the IBM personal computer comes along, and if we're sorting alphabetically, the letter I comes before the letter N. So therefore, we insert this in its correct position, which is actually over here. So now we've got the IBM personal computer, Nintendo Wii, Samsung Galaxy S10, and the ZX Spectrum. So this is our sorted side, this is our unsorted side. We've got our Samsung Q1, so that comes along, and to insert this in the correct place, um, Q1 comes after the Galaxy, but before ZX Spectrum, if we're sorting alphabetically, and we place that there. And then lastly, you've got the BlackBerry Bold. Um, so the BlackBerry Bold begins the letter B, so that gets inserted right in the beginning. That means all of these can move along. That would be the easiest way to move them along. Yep. And we'll place that there. And therefore, we're left with a sorted data set. Let's see that um, sort on pen and paper. Okay? So let's say, for example, you have got six numbers. And we'll put those out of order. So nine... 8, 1, 4, 3, 6, 2. And we'll try and put these uh, numbers in order. So what happens first of all is this becomes our sorted um, array and this is our unsorted array. Then the next time we iterate through, you've got 8, 9 in our sorted array. And we're left with 1, 4, 3, 6, 2 in our unsorted array. After that, we've got the 1. So the sorted array becomes 1, 8, and 9. And the unsorted array is 4, 3, 6, and 2. The next iteration, uh, we take the 4. And the 4 gets inserted between the 1 and the 8, so it's 1, 4, 8, 9, and 3, 6, and 2 in the unsorted. And we carry on going um, as such. The 3 gets inserted between the 1 and the 4, so 1, 3, 4, 8, 9, and the unsorted array is just 6 and 2. We go a couple more times, so 1, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, is sorted and 2 is the unsorted and then lastly we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8 and 9 and our data has been sorted. Each time um, the card, every card has to be compared to the sorted array and inserted in the correct place. Um, so given that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards, or seven numbers here. That means we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stages. Yeah, so 
on average, um, essentially, is going to be um, however many items you've got in your data set. Generally, that's how many comparisons or how many passes, actually, not the number of comparisons, but the number of passes that it's going to take in order to um, sort a data set as such. Let's look at another way of sorting our, our data. Another way of sorting would be using a bubble sort with um, seven cards. And once again, the, the cards are shuffled, so we'll just lay those out and um, we'll try and get those back into alphabetical order using a bubble sort. Now this method, the bubble sort, is actually a lot easier to program, um, but you'll find that it's a lot more inefficient And this is how it works. You can only compare the neighboring card. And if the neighboring card is out of place, then it swaps. So you'll see the Tianhe 2 is compared to Alienware Area 51. Now A comes before T, so they swap. Now Tianhe 2 is compared with Summit. And Tianhe, T, Tianhe 2, it comes after Summit, so they swap. And what you can notice is that Tianhe 2 is essentially bubbling up, and that's why it's called a bubble sort. Tianhe 2 is compared to Manchester Baby, and T comes after M, so they swap. There's quite a few supercomputers in this uh, selection of cards. Tianhe 2 and Titan. So um, Tianhe 2 is actually comes before Titan in the alphabet, so they're fine. Titan is compared to BBC Microbit, and they swap. And the process is repeated until, in a single pass, there are no swaps. Okay? So we're going to continue. Alienware and Summit, they're in the right place. Summit and Manchester Baby, they need to swap because M comes before S. Uh, Summit and Tianhe 2 need to swap. Actually, they don't. S comes before T. Tianhe 2 and BBC Microbit, so they need to swap because B comes before T. And then Tianhe 2 and Titan, they're fine because they're in order. Now, because those swaps, we go back to the beginning. beginning. Alienware Manchester Baby, they're fine. Manchester and Summit, that's fine. Summit and BBC Microbit, they need to swap because B comes before S. Summit and Tianhe is fine. Tianhe and Titan is fine. And what we're going to notice is we're going to notice that BBC Microbit is now bubbling to the left because that's actually, you know, comes before um, S and um, before the Manchester Baby as well. So Alienware and Manchester Baby are fine. Manchester Baby and BBC Microbit um, need to swap because B comes before M. Now what some of you might think is that surely we just stop here because we can tell that the cards are sorted. However, in the algorithm, the computer does not know that the cards are sorted. So actually it carries on going. B, M is fine. M, S is fine. S, T is fine. Uh, Tianhe comes before Titan, so we're fine. But because there was a swap between these two cards, there is one last pass until there's no swap. So now we compare A comes before B, B comes before M, M comes before S, S comes before T, Tianhe comes before Titan. So now the cards are sorted. And you'll notice that that was a bit less efficient um, given that um, the cards could only ever move one place um, per comparison. And let's look at that now on paper. So if you've got a set of numbers again, let's just take, uh, well, shall we take the same set of numbers so that we can actually make a comparison? 9814, I'll just keep that there and I'll copy it down. So we've got uh, top of our page, 9814362. Okay, so we've got the same numbers that we had last time. And let's now do, a bubble sort on this. So 9 and 8 are compared and they swap. Yeah, so we can put 8 here and 9 I'll just temporarily write up here because 9 is now compared to 1 and that swaps. So I'll write the 1 and I'll put the 9 here because that's bubbling up. 9 and 4 are compared. Once again, they swap. So we'll put that there and the 9 goes up here. 9 and 3, um, the 3 gets put 
and that swaps. I'll put the nine here because that's but once again they swap. So we'll put that there. And the nine and three, um, the three gets put nine goes up here. And that swaps. Nine and four are compared. I'll put the nine here because that's but once again they swap. In terms of implementation, what is happening in the bubble sort is actually we have a temporary array, uh, well, a temporary variable, and that's shown here. That's the value which um, which stores the value whilst we're swapping, yeah? So if we're comparing now 8 and 1, 1 is less, so that goes there, and the 8 is essentially put into the temporary variable there. 8 and 4 are compared, so 4 is placed there, and 8 is bubbling up. 8 and 3 are compared, so 3 goes there, and 8 is here. 8 and 6 is compared, so 6 goes there, and 8 bubbles up. 8 and 2 are compared, 2 goes there, and 8 bubbles up, and 8 and 9 are compared. 8 can go there, and 9 is there, okay? Because there were swaps, we'll go back to the beginning and carry on. 1 and 4, they're in the right place. So actually, we can put the 1 there um, and move on. The 4 and the 3 are compared. The 3 goes there, the 4 is temporarily up here. 4 and 6 compared, 4 goes down, and 6 is temporarily here. 6 and 2 are compared. So 2 goes there and 6 bubbles up. 6 and 8 are compared. 6 is smaller, so we know 8 and 9. They don't need comparing because we know they're sorted. Okay, um, and then we keep going because there were swaps. Um, and we'll put a little, kind of a little checkbox here to say whether or not there were swaps each time. So because there was a swap, we'll just tick it. And when the swaps is false, then we know we can stop because we'll know if there's no swaps, then we must be sorted, right? So now we'll go one and three are compared. They're in the correct order, so we can just write those down. Three and four are compared, so they can be written down. Um, actually, four's not written down because four's compared to two, and we can swap those around. So two goes there, four is bubbled up. Four and six are compared. Um, four goes here, six is here. Six is compared to eight. Eight is compared to nine. There were swaps, so we tick that off and we've still done a swap that time. One and three is compared, they're fine. So one gets written down. Three and two are compared, but they need to be swapped. So we might as well tick this now because there were swaps. Three and four are compared, they're fine. Four and six are compared, they're okay. Six and eight are compared, they're fine. And then that's compared to nine and that's okay. Now, we can see that this is all um, sorted, but actually the computer sees that there was a swap. So it goes right to the beginning and checks them again. So from the start of our data set or the start of our array, uh, we see that we've got one, two, three, it's compared, four compared, six compared, eight and nine. So because there were no swaps, then we know that it is now sorted. If we look at the number of passes we've done, uh, it might be actually the same number of passes that we had in our insertion sort example in this case, but you'll see that the number of swaps is far greater. Um, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, the seven passes again, so same as our seven stages in our insertion sort. But when you look at how much processing has taken place, in this one, the eight just moved seamlessly into the correct position. It was inserted, hence the name insertion sort. Likewise, a one was seamlessly inserted here. The four was seamlessly inserted there. Whereas if you look at the number of comparisons and number of processes that takes place in the bubble sort, you can see that actually there's a lot of um, swapping going on and this number bubbling up and this number bubbling up. You can see that actually the computers performed a lot more comparisons. So bubble sort, although easier to implement and code, um, is less efficient and those of you who do A-level, for example, will find that actually this is done through um, a nested for loop. And so you might hear about um, big O notation, and we'd say that um, the bubble sort has a complexity of big O n squared, um, because it loops through everything. We, um, big O know that um, the sort has a complexity of a bubbles n squared um, because it loops through everything. We, um, big O know that um, the sort 
has a complexity of big O sort. The final sort is a, a divide and conquer method of sorting which is called merge sort. And in the merge sort what we're going to do is we're actually going to split the deck up and halve our problem set each time. So we have an array of eight cards and let's just imagine that they're split into individual um, arrays right now. So every array only has one item as we see here. What we will then do is we're going to pair these up. So in the second stage they're paired up. So the Raspberry Pi is paired up with ENIAC. iPhone XS is paired up with the Commodore 64. ThinkPad is paired up with the uh, Mac Pro 5 and the Asus is paired up with the Apple iPad and you can see now what we've got instead of our eight arrays of length one each we now have four arrays instead and they're organized a bit higgledy-piggledy just because uh, we struggle to fit all on our screen so <laughs> here's our eight cards and you have the first pair, ENIAC and Raspberry Pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if they're in order, and if not, we're just going to swap them around. So ENIAC and Raspberry Pi, well, E comes before R, so E on the left, R there. Commodore 64, C comes before I, so they need to swap. And then Mac Pro and ThinkPad, well, M comes before T, so they need to swap around. And Asus and EPC, in this case, they need to swap around as well. Okay, so we've sorted each um, array with length two, and now what we can do is we can merge the arrays. So we've got only two arrays of length four, and we'll try and sort those. So these are merged with these, and these are merged with these, and then we'll try and sort them in their sub arrays. So over here, then you've got ENIAC Raspberry Pi, the Commodore 64 is going to go first because C comes before E and then it's going to go um, iPhone XS, so I and then R. So that subarray of four cards is now sorted. We need to do the same on this side. So the Apple iPad comes first, then the Asus EPC and then the Mac Pro and then the ThinkPad. So I'll put those down in their sorted manner. Okay, now we've got two arrays which are both sorted, we can merge these two together and you'll see that essentially we've done a lot fewer passes. We're going to merge this into one big array and then just sort it. So we've got C, E, I, R, um, Apple iPad goes in front of Commodore 64, um, the Asus EPC goes in front of the Commodore 64. The Mac Pro goes in front of the Raspberry Pi and the ThinkPad is at the end. So what you have now is you should have a sorted um, data set as such. I'm struggling to show how it is, but essentially you've got the start is the Apple iPad, then the ACC PC, Commodore 64, ENIAC, iPhone XS, Mac Pro 5.1, um, Raspberry Pi and the ThinkPad. If we're to look at that on paper, let's use eight numbers now. Um, we'll go for a similar number sequence as we had previously, um, but we'll add one more number. So nine, eight, one, four, three, six, two, um, and five. So here we've got eight numbers. And if we imagine that is in one array, what we would first do is break that up into eight separate numbers. So you've got nine, eight, one, four, three, six, two, five. And all of these are their own um, separate values. Then what we can do is we can do the process of merge sort. So we're going to merge them as pairs and also sort them at the same time. So eight and nine become one pair. One and four are paired up and they're actually in the right order. Three and six are paired up, they're in the right order. 
and 2 and 5 are paired up. They're in the right order. So we can show the arrows to say like how they paired up. And then now we're going to merge these two arrays and we're also going to merge these two arrays. So 8 and 9 and 1 and 4 are merged together and you've got 1, 4, 8, 9 and on this side you've got 2, 3, 5, 6. And then now we're going to merge these together as such. So you've got 1, 4, Oh, my bad. Uh, let's just write that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. And what you'll see here then, if you compare that to our previous um, sorts, you'll see that in terms of stages, we've got um, one stage, two, three, and four stages. So in a merge sort of eight items, um, there's actually only four passes. And um, that remains true regardless of how well sorted the array is. So even if you present a array which is perfectly sorted and you perform a merge sort on it, it'll actually still take the same amount of comparisons. It will have to do it in four comparisons. Whereas with say, for example, a bubble sort, that's not true because after one pass, it would see there's no swaps and then it would stop. Whereas in the merge sort, because it used a divide and conquer method, um, it's more efficient at sorting large data sets and it does that through divide and conquer. Um, those of you who do A-level will see that um, this is represented in big O notation, if you're familiar with that, um, as big O N log N. And you'll see the reason for that is because when we take a, um, I suppose we can call it a divide and conquer approach, usually it would be log N, but because we've also got the process of breaking down the, um, large array and subarrays, that in itself also takes n. So big O, n log n, um, the complexity shows that in terms of time complexity, it's a lot more efficient than say our um, bubble here, which was O n squared. And for those of you who are interested in the insertion sort, you'll find that the time complexity of this for the A-level students, not GCSE students, is also big O n squared. Um, and the reason for that, once again, is because you've got a nested loop. Um, because you're iterating through for every single element, you have to iterate through um, the whole array. So you're doing essentially um, n by n. Um, and therefore it's big O n squared. So in terms of time complexity, um, the insertion sort and the bubble sort don't really scale as well as say the merge sort. And that's because big O n log n is, um, is in terms of time and how it scales, um, it increases at a much um, slower rate. So as the data set gets larger, um, the number of comparisons does not increase by that much. Whereas when you take, say, a bubble sort and a insertion sort, you'll see that the rate of increase um, in terms of time gets bigger. Things like space complexity, we might cover in a later tutorial, but hopefully um, this has given you a good intro into different searching and sorting algorithms um, to recap, um, the first search that we did was a linear search. So we were searching from left to right, trying to find a certain number. Um, and that took a long time. Um, say, for example, we were trying to find the number 20. And if you've got 31 cards and you're starting from the beginning, you would essentially do 20 comparisons to get there. Whereas when we used our divide and conquer method, the binary search, we actually halved our problem set each time. 
So what happened was we went to 16, then 24, then 20. So we found our card or the item we we're looking for within three um, comparisons. So that was a lot more efficient. And that led us to think about, well, what is a way of sorting our data? Because you can only use a divide and conquer method, binary search um, on a sorted um, array or a sorted data set. So there were three types of sorts. We looked at the bubble sort, where the items essentially kept bubbling up when we were looking at different pairs comparing. We also looked at an insertion sort where the items uh, effectively, if you had a few items here and an uns and a sorted side here, they were inserted into the correct part of um, the sorted array. And then we also looked at um, the merge sort and the kind of diagram for the merge sort then would look a bit like this. You'd have um, eight items they would pair up into these two, they would pair up into these two, they would pair up into these two, and these would pair up into these two. Then these would be merged and sorted together. So you'd end up with a subarray of four, subarray of four, and then those would merge and sorted together as well. So I'd say the merge sort clearly um, takes few comparisons um, and is more time efficient than the others. However, in terms of implementation, um, it's not always the easiest to implement. Um, and also, if the data set is already you know, fairly sorted, then actually something like a bubble sort um, might be more effective. I hope that's been helpful. And I hope you found um, using cards, whether they're the computer combat cards or whether they're just actually normal playing cards or piece of paper, um, to sort your um, data helpful. Um, it certainly helps in terms of um, practice if you're trying to sort between um, an unsorted and sorted array. I think being able to physically manipulate um, cards which are either numbered or alphabetical um, might help. Um, and it's just different ways of practicing. Um, with my students, I advise them to use piece of paper or cards in this case, um, and also to have a go um, on paper. Um, we might also look at um, some algorithms or programs um, that are already made. Um, and at A-level, um, those programs, the uh, students will have to program themselves. But still, um, I think physically manipulating something is a good idea. Um, these cards are available um, as a Creative Commons download, and you can make them yourself. Or, um, if you wish to, you can buy them as a deck, a physical deck, at computercombatcards.com. I hope that was helpful. Um, and we'll see you next time.